Okay, here is a chemical reaction that poses another special challenge for balancing. The challenge in this one is the use of polyatomic ions. Remember, polyatomic ions were usually anions that were made up of many atoms. And these atoms come as groups on the, in the uh, reaction itself. And I'll show you the groups that are in here. Here's one group. And maybe you remember this as the nitrate group. And here's another group, the carbonate group. And if you look closely, you'll see that these groups, the nitrate group and the carbonate group, are on both sides of the reaction. Now, what challenges students is that it makes this reaction look really big and scary. I've got a lot of elements involved here. And also, the other really big challenge is that because polyatomic ions are known as the oxyanions, they have a lot of oxygens involved. The oxygen, you can see, gets spread out all over the place. And the student runs into the problem of, how do I balance all these oxygens? There are two schools of thought on this. Uh, one school of thought is that we can just uh, work with elements that are uh, not as spread out. So that would be elements like the lead and the sodium, where I only find those in one place at a time and balance those and hope that all the others work themselves out, which normally happens. The other school of thought is to think of the group, the nitrates and the carbonates, as just a single group and balance them as a group. Uh, on some of the websites and books and places I've seen where they actually try to replace the book, the, the group, with another symbol, like an X or a Y. What I'm going to do is just look at them as groups, and I'm going to try to balance them as a group. And I'm going to show you how it'll just work out if I just focus on the elements that are not spread out all over the place and you'll see that these oxygens that are all over are just going to work themselves out. So let's start that ledger sheet that we always do. Divide this reaction up into reactants and products and record things. Now watch how I record things. First I see some lead here. I'm just going to write its symbol down. And the next thing that I notice here again is one of those polyatomic ions. And so I'm going to think of this as a group instead of thinking of it as two nitrogens and six oxygens. I'm going to think of it as NO3. That's my nitrate group. Over here I see sodium. And then again, instead of thinking of this as one carbon and three oxygens, I'm going to see this as CO3, the group, the carbonate group. Now let's count up. Got one here, and over on this side I have one there. So I'll write that in. Let's look at the nitrate groups. Here I have two. But over here on this side, see no parentheses around this NO3 group. So that indicates I only have one. Jumping to my next element, sodium. I have two of those. And on this side, I see I only have one. And then again, looking here, I have one carbonate. No parentheses around it, so there's only one. And there's only one on this side. All 
I don't have to do anything to the lead. It's done. But this nitrate, I have two here and one over there. So I'm going to go find the nitrate in the problem. Here it is. And I'm going to change its coefficient and just increase it by one. Let's get those changes made in our ledger sheet. Now I have two of the sodiums. So I'm going to fix that. And I have two of the nitrates. So I'm going to fix that. Now by inspection, looks like everything's balanced. I've turned this really big and scary uh, equation into something that was pretty simple and the reason it became simpler to deal with is because I used the polyatomic ions as a group instead of trying to balance each atom individually.